So in the last session, we talked about ecosystems, how different communities work together, interact together, and the interaction also happens with that of the environmental and climatic factors. Now, as because there are multiple factors associated with it, there are biological factors, communities and organisms, and there are environmental factors within a certain range. When that range expands, it forms biomes. And the study about the biomes and all that of interaction that happens between biotic community, geographical factors, environmental factors can be studied with respect to biogeography. So when we talk about biomes, biomes are distinct biological communities that have formed a response and are structured as respond to the physical climate. Now biomes are specifically regarded or structured with the respect to the climate. Okay, ecosystem was functioning with respect to different um, ecological factors, but biomes are strictly or moreover expanded forms of ecosystems with respect to the climate. Right, so there are multiple types of biomes that you can find. It depends on what is the latitude and available rainfall, temperature, humidity, and there are multiple factors which decides which biome will be what. Right, so there are multiple types of biome which we'll be studying in detail. So this is a just a map showing about how different kinds of biomes are present in entire world. Actually, there are so many more, but this just gives you a basic idea. Okay. So the thing is, when we classify biomes, as because there are multiple biomes, it cannot be just classified or divided with respect to any factor. There are multiple overlapping factors as well. So there are small scale variation that happens with ranges to ranges. There are a lot of exceptions. So all in all, a gradual change or an average change or average conditions, which are dominant over an area are taken into account to classify a biome. Right, so let's consider you know rainfall if it is talking about then the rainfall varies with respect to area to area now within the same area within india you will find variation of rainfalls even within a hundred kilometer range so the thing is the variation is very small scale so we have to take average and dominant factors to classify biomes so many classification rules and strategies have been developed one of that is whole ridge life zones now a few questions have come from whole ridge life zones so it's important to understand that the whole ridge life zones is divided with respect to potential evapotranspiration transpiration ratio annual precipitation and bio temperature as well as with respect to humidity so there are four factors potential evapotranspiration, transpiration evapor transpiration here refers to transpiration evaporation okay with respect to the photosynthesis that occurs then there is annual precipitation and rainfall then there is temperature and humidity so we are talking about four factors evapor transpiration precipitation temperature or bio temperature as well as humidity so all these all these four factors decide which area will be of which biome so this is a pyramidal structure which talks about different cross-sectional regions of how interaction happens so in desert the potential evapotranspiration rate is highest because there is more evaporation with respect to the transpiration but the humidity is lowest and the precipitation is lowest as well. The precipitation is lowest as well. Okay. So you can see that the precipitation is lowest, the latitude is low. And in this region, the humidity being low, there is less availability of organic life. Then in rainforest, when we talk about that, there is higher precipitation, there is higher humidity, that is super humid condition, and there is higher potential evapotranspiration rate. So the thing is you can see that the ranges is like that that evapotranspiration increases downwards annual precipitation increases downwards humidity increases in this way okay so you can see the transpiration rate is lower at the beginning and it rises here now the humidity rises as per here and precipitation rises as per in this way so this is how it looks like okay so you have to consider these four factors so whenever questions comes around these four factors you need to understand and question with respect to that so the terms that have been mentioned here polar subpolar boreal all these kind of latitudinal differences that you know but altitudinal differences with respect to height it starts with mountain pre-mountain lower mountains subalpine alpine which is larger and then alvar is the tip or the pointed tips right so usually mountain means the vegetation that appears around the mountains or usually on the mountains then there is lower mountain around the foothills then is pre-mountain before the mountain okay when it comes to the mountain region above the mountainous uh, sections the rocks where it starts 
you usually find alpine and subalpine regions and then at the top you usually find ice or usually there are no or vegetational systems now moving forward there are biogeographical realms biogeographical realms are you know large scale realms that has been specifically structured in order to assess conservation as well as biogeographical systems now the entire world is divided into eight biogeographical realms in terrestrial systems so the eight terrestrial biomes are neartic neotropical oceanic antarctic afrotropical palearctic indomalayan oceanic and australasian so the thing is it is mentioned with respect to the evolution as well as with the distance that it occurs okay so there is neartic or neartic and there is neotropical so neartic usually talks about you know northern american region and canada and stuff and then there is neotropical which is over on the southern american region afrotropical region usually consists of the africa and the tropical part of it whereas the equatorial region and above is usually considered within the palearctic region and the indian indian philippines and south asian countries are considered in the indo-malayan region the australian region consisting of few portions of asia as well as australia is australasia and there the oceanic region that is left is oceanic which is consists of different islands and then there is antarctic region so these are different terrestrial biomes apart from that there are also marine biomes with respect to the altitudes that temperate northern pacific you know western indo pacific temperate southern africa and so on so there are multiple biomes of marine as well as terrestrial systems so they have been developed by world wildlife fund okay with respect to division that divides the entire biogeographical systems throughout the world so there are you know eight terrestrial biomes as i mentioned neartic palearctic neartic talks about the north american systems palearctic talks about the russian and european systems whereas afrotropic systems are usually with respect to african regions indomalayan regions are south asian countries or south east asian countries then there is australia and some regions of asia hence australasia neotropic region is southern american regions then there is oceania which is usually the consisting of oceanic portion of the pacific and few region of arctic as well as antarctic and then there is the antarctic land region right and then there are marine systems or marine biogeographical or marine biogeographical realms there is arctic temperate northern temperate pacific tropical arctic so this depends on different oceanic systems right 